right, I am very, very excited right now. Because I am going to bring to the stage uh, one of the uh, true great comedians uh, of, of our generation. He has literally been on hundreds and hundreds of television shows, every talk show you can imagine, from The Tonight Show to David Letterman to HBO to The Comedy Central. Uh, he has been on sitcoms and, and guest starred in movies and television. He's here tonight. A warm welcome for, well, actually for two people, a big welcome for Willie Tyler and Lester. Clap your hands and let them hear you. Some other things I want to ask you, you don't mind, right? You, 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 hang on, hang on a second. You don't mind, right? Ask me anything, man. 
Now, here's the host of show called ABC Weekly Specials. A lot of those shows are based on books. One of those books are based on a, a book called A Basenji. Basenji is a dog that does not bark. There's a dog called Basenji that does not bark. I had a bunch of watchdog one time. He has a, a Basenji has a watchdog. You know, they get night, he'd be in the backyard. He hear a noise, he'd run over to the window, look inside at me and go. <laughs> Now, I haven't seen you for a while. Where you been? I just got back from Detroit. Why'd you go to Detroit? I went, I went there for a class reunion. Class reunion? Yeah, class reunion. You know, you can always tell people on the plane who don't fly a lot. People on airplanes who don't fly a lot. Yeah, what do you mean? Because, you know, they always applaud when a plane lands, the wheels first touch the runway, they applaud. I don't applaud until I get to the baggage claim there and collect my luggage. And then they study. You know what I'm saying there? Okay, now, now, why did you go back to Detroit? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, pilots have DJ voices. Pilots have DJ voices. Yeah. Next time you're on the plane, listen close, because they're going. Is your pilot sticking? We just take it out, we'll be flying at 35,000 feet. <laughs> Sit back and relax and enjoy your tea lunch. Can you imagine a pilot having a voice like Goofy? <laughs> oh, yup. Yeah. Oh, yup, yeah. this is your pilot speaking. We just took off from San Francisco International Airport. We'll be flying at 35 feet. <laughs> you want to see the Golden Gate Bridge? Look up. <laughs> so uh, what, you went back to, to, to Detroit for what, a class reunion? Yeah. There, were there any teachers there from the class reunion? Yeah, Miss Davis is there. Miss Davis, you a science teacher. Oh yeah, Miss Davis, the science teacher. She's the one in school that told you you were going to be an astronaut, right? Miss Davis, the science teacher, she's the one in school that told me I was taking up space. <laughs> okay. anyway, did you see, by the way, uh, Jenny and Jake? Huh? Jenny and Jake. Was that a rap group? No, Jenny, you're a high school sweethearts. Remember them? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Jenny and Jake, yeah. They were always holding hands in the, in the hall. I remember that thing. They were there. They were there. still holding hands. After all these years? Yeah. Now they keep them beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> You got that? I got it. Now, now what's going to happen is like, uh, now, so you're doing it again. You're doing it again. Don't, you're doing it again, man. Come on, now. I'm going to take your time. I go, hold on a second. We talk, but you, you were a weather forecaster, is that right? That's right. They say lightning does not strike in the same place twice. Is that right? That's right. Why doesn't lightning strike in the same place twice? The same place is not there the second time around. <laughs> testing, one, two, testing. <laughs> Now speaking of, you know, we're talking about the internet and stuff like that. You ever notice this? On the internet, they got a thing called nakednews.com. Yeah. Nakednews.com. Now a lot of those, uh, those shows, they have women, the anchors, they do the news, legitimate news, but they do it in the nude. It's a legitimate site, nakednews.com. So I really can't concentrate on that. So I can't concentrate because I can't concentrate on the news, because it's legitimate news, but I can't concentrate on it because they're nude. I don't have the time on the hand. You don't have a problem with that? No, I was watching a naked news weather lady the other night. And you remember her forecast? Yeah. What was it? Partly cloudy, followed by tits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got that. You got it? Okay. Wait, you got it. Some other things, right? Yeah, yeah, ask me, man. Ask me. Okay. Now what's gonna happen is like I'm gonna try I'm gonna try something. You look 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 straight ahead. Look straight ahead. I'm gonna try to hypnotize you here. Because I've learned this little thing. Look, no, look straight ahead, look straight ahead. Okay. Count up straight now. One, two, three. Now you follow my finger, follow my finger. One, two, three, go. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, go ahead. I was joking around. Go ahead. Sleepy. 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 Less. Less. It's pretty cool. I found this little pamphlet on hypnosis. And he's like, sound like a light. I'm really proud of myself to be able to. As I said before, I'm really proud of I'm supposed to do that thing, you know what I'm saying? 
I got it. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is like that. We're going to do this real quick. What's going to happen? This is what we're going to take off on a private detective. It was like Philip Marlowe. We're going back a few years. Let's see. Humphrey Bogart did a detective, private detective. This is an odd impression of the private detective. Ready, let's get it. Nobody starts off. Ready? Here we go. The private investigator's office is located in the busiest part of the city. I was moving forward, kicking the can down the road until I was thrown underneath the bus. <laughs> they was Wednesday, the weather was hot and dry. It was so hot and dry, I looked out the window and saw a tree chasing a dog. <laughs> That's no joke, but the tree is my cousin, so I took it personally. <laughs> they were sitting around my toilet desk looking for the phone when all of a sudden it rang. This fellow starts to cry. Never done that before. By the time we located the phone, it had stopped ringing, so we relaxed. He had to answer the phone. Wasn't ringing. How many times you sit around your house saying, hey, the phone did not ring. I think I'll answer it. <laughs> did that a couple of times. I was down in Dallas, Texas. You know, speaking of Texas, Texas is big, man. Texas is big. I was in San Antonio. I drove nine days. I was still in Texas. <laughs> Last week, I was in Rhode Island. I drove two days up back in Texas. <laughs> Then the phone rang again. I grabbed the phone on the second ring and slowly spoke into the mouthpiece. William and Lester, private investigations. The voice on the other end was so low I could hardly understand what she was saying. That's because I had the receiver pressed tightly against my left ear. I shall refer to speak up, and she did. That's when William left ear realized what was happening. The pain was so intense I quickly gave the receiver to Lester. I quickly hung it up. I don't want what happened to a left ear to have in mind. <laughs> Later on in the evening, as we were sitting around the office, something very strange happened. The doorbell rang. We looked at each other in disbelief. <laughs> we did not have a doorbell. <laughs> then the phone rang again. This time it's getting on my nerves. I grabbed the phone and placed it tight in against my right ear this time. A few seconds later, my right ear realized what was happening. It was the same woman who called before, and she wanted our help. I looked down the directions to our house and I laid the cotton in both of his aching ears. Then I ran out front to the cool night air. I was halfway to the curb when I realized why the night air was so cool. I forgot my pants. <laughs> ran back inside and got dressed. After Lester got dressed, we both ran out front to the car. I got in and started to mobile up and we were headed for her house. We had about three hours to kill, so we stopped by the post office and stood in line to buy stamps. <laughs> <laughs> three hours later, we bought the stamps and continued on to her house. The neighborhood that Mr. Rowan lived in was plush. The mailbox on the front lawn was bigger than the whole post office that jumped out. I drove up the steep driveway and stopped in front of the gigantic doors. And then I walked up the 15 steps to the big entrance doors. I was right by his side. I knocked as hard as I could on the door with my fist. I was still right by his side. I no sooner finished knocking when the door flew open, hitting Lester in the nose. The momentum just knocked me back down the steps. Guess what? I was no longer. <laughs> a few minutes later, we went in her living room. Yeah, it's nice time when you're fun having. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, that too. That too. Anyway, there she was. She had on an outfit I'd only seen in nudist camps. <laughs> Did she start to tell us a problem? Well, he told her to go in the bedroom and put some clothes on so they could sell down from them first. <laughs> Did she tell us a problem? The automobile was missing and she didn't know why. We finally convinced her to call her a mechanic and have them tune that trunk up so it wouldn't miss anymore. She was elated, and she's happy too. She must have known we were the right ones for the job because she told us our check was already in the mail. I said, what? She must have known on the last part. She told us our check was already in the mail. If I would have known that, we would have picked it up to the post office while we were standing in line without those stamps. <laughs> but she shook my hand, kissed less on the lips, whispered something in his ear, then Showed us the door. I don't know why she showed us that door. Once you get hit in the face by something that big, you know where it's at. I quickly walked down the 15 steps. I took the shortcut and fell down the 15 steps. <laughs> by the time I got behind the wheel of the car and started to motor up, Lester was picking himself up off the ground. As I picked myself up off the ground, I thanked myself for picking myself up off the ground. Ran around to the passenger side of the car. Got in, closed the door on my leg. Ouch. We headed back to the office, which is located in the busiest part of the city. Looked like how the trailer this kitty corner to the 7 Eleven store. But all the way back, the words the mystery woman whispered in my ear after she kissed me still haunted me. She said, You made the wood, but I think you're wonderful. That's when we knew this case was closed. Yeah, I was moving forward, kicking the can down the road. 
The Lord's coming underneath the bush. His case is closed. His case is closed. <laughs> So maybe have a little song, but this is a little classic song we like to pay our set off for tonight, folks. And uh, we're going to help you with this particular thing. And this is actually a Benny King. Benny King did this song. And he was, he was with the, uh, he was with the, um, what, the Drifters? He was with the Drifters for a whole bunch of years. And then what happened was like, um, he went out on his own. And this is a song that he did. And they're ready to do it. Ready to do it. And the band's, the band's, the band's getting ready. The band's ready. Anytime you're ready, my story. No, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Deja vu all over again, man. <laughs> it's number two. Yeah, yeah. Here we go.